This episode of Brains on Games, we'll talk about Point Salad by AEG. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald, and this episode, like I said, we're going to talk about Point Salad, a game that came out a while back by AEG. This was sent to me not too long ago, actually, in the same box as Tiny Towns, which I talked about some episodes ago. Uh, But Point Salad is a game that's all about set collection. It's a game that you can play with kids, well, the box says kids age 14 and up, but I certainly think younger kids can figure this one out. This is a pretty straightforward game. The math is where it gets complicated. We'll talk about that. So the box says age 14 and up. You can play this game with two to six players and games play in only about half an hour. Let's take a deeper look at Point Salad by AEG. Point Salad is a light drafting and set collection game where the goal is to earn the most points once the final cards have been drafted. You're going to start the game with a marketplace that looks something like this, and on your turn, gameplay is super simple. On your turn, you're either going to choose two of these veggies or one of these point cards. So these cards will tell you how many points you're going to earn from the sets that you're collecting. And what's interesting about the game as you get going, you collect a few of these, your cards, your point cards, might allow you to count your vegetables in multiple sets. So for example, well, here's two cards right here. So for every three sets of carrots, you're going to get eight points, uh, but you're also going to have a chance to get two points per carrot. So your carrots are going to multiply uh, as you play through this game. Now you might notice in the corner of each of these point cards is a vegetable, a picture of one of these other vegetable cards, and there's a good reason for that. After you've drafted, At some point during your turn, if you want to, or on a later turn, you can flip over a point card to turn it into a vegetable. Now, you cannot turn a vegetable into a point card. You can only go one way. Uh, And so then you're, you're altering kind of the calculation that's going to happen at the end of the game. And that might happen if you get stuck with a bunch of these point cards that you don't want. Maybe there's no vegetables that are going to be helpful for you because some of the point cards will be giving you points for uh, the lowest number of peppers, for example. So if if there's too many peppers out here, you don't want to take one of those vegetables if you want to keep the lowest number. But some of the point cards give you negative points for vegetables in your salad. So you might grab one of these and at some point say, well, no, I think I'm going to start collecting uh, those peppers, for example, or those carrots, and then I want to flip it over so that I'm not going to get those negative points uh, for collecting those cards. The multiples are what make this game a lot of fun when you start to do something like, here's a good example. This happened in the game that I was playing. Uh, I was lucky enough to manage to grab this card that would give me eight points for every set of onion plus pepper plus cabbage. Now, if I were even luckier, I might also have been able to grab this card, which takes a subset of those two things and will give me five extra points for onion plus cabbage. So uh, that's going to allow me to earn, really, for each each of these sets, I'm going to be getting 13 points. Uh, And it just multiplies and multiplies as you collect these cards. There's great big stacks of cards. Now, some of the the point cards are a little bit fancier, and you might get some points if you have an even number or some some, uh, lower number of points if you have an odd number of that vegetable in your set. So you're really thinking about which cards to draft that are going to maximize your points and and you want to get as many multiples as possible to earn lots and lots of points at the end. Very simple game. You're drafting two vegetables or one points card and you have an opportunity if you want to to flip one of your point cards over into a vegetable and then you're trying to be the one with the most points once the last card has been collected. I played this game at a two-player count, and I do like drafting games with lower numbers of players because that gives you a chance to plan ahead. Uh, If I'm playing this game with six players, there's only six vegetable cards and three stacks of, of these point cards, so... Uh, if if the person beside me is playing and it's going to be four turns before it comes around, all of the cards are going to change. So it definitely 
forces you to uh, come up with a strategy on the fly and adjust and change your strategy as you go when you've got larger play counts. So I did like playing this at two players. I think three players would be good too in terms of just being able to be strategic and plan ahead. You can look at what the other players want. You can grab those things ahead of time or you, you can uh, maybe count on certain vegetables being available still on your turn and that's something that you can't do with larger player counts and that is my question for you this episode when you are playing drafting games what are your favorite play counts for for different kinds of drafting games i like the lower ones but you know there might be people out there who prefer to play with five or six people when they're drafting and sort of watch what goes around and adjust things as they go you can leave your answer to that question in the comment section below the video but what skills are you working on when you play this game of point salad? Well, the one I wanted to talk about the most, one that hasn't come up in every single game, is that this one is a sneaky math game. You are collecting those sets and grouping everything together, but you're really trying to get those multiples. And then at the end, when you're counting up the points, you are multiplying. I had four sets of those those vegetables so I had to multiply eight times four and then I'm adding in addition to that okay well I have this many carrots and I've, I've got to multiply those and add that to the total from before so it is a, a good game for practicing that mental math of course you, you do need to be flexible in your problem solving strategy so there's some fluid reasoning there too fluid reasoning or flexible problem solving when you're kind of working with incomplete information and adjusting your strategy as you go but really i wanted to talk about point salad because it is such i think a, a, a sneaky math game you don't think so much about the math when you're counting up those points you're just excited to watch those numbers go up final thoughts about point salad well this is a game that's quick to play uh, it plays in half an hour or, or less if you have flu fewer players. Uh, it's a game that's easy to teach and easy to learn. Uh, and it's so it's simple in terms of what you're doing on your turn and the turns can go quickly. Uh, but there's still some strategy there. The strategy is light enough that you're unlikely to get started stuck in that analysis paralysis where you're kind of thinking what how am i going to maximize the points on my turn it's kind of a simple silly game a great filler game i think because it's not too heavy and but there is still some strategy and it is uh psychologically uh it is quite enjoyable to watch those points go up and to get some extra multipliers based on the cards you're already collecting that was the, my favorite part of the strategy in this game you know to be able to find another point card that works with the cards that you're already gathering is is kind of the ultimate turn uh in a game of point salad what are the the downsides of point salad well uh, you, you know, in terms of a simple strategy game, what what downsides are there going to be? Not too not too many. Uh, I would say it's another game where the cards are thin cards. So if you're concerned about the durability of your cards, you want to sleeve those ones. Uh, but really, uh, probably the downside for me is the is the setup or tear down. Because at lower play counts for point salad, you're taking a certain number of each vegetable out of the deck. So you kind of either want to put things away in a very organized way, which honestly isn't so hard because you're collecting your sets anyway. So they're probably going to be ar arranged in columns in front of you. So they're already sorted for you. Uh, but you do want to, and then you have to really sh shuffle them up and mix them up. Once you've pulled out, we had to pull out six of each vegetable card for a two-player game so it does take a minute to organize that i mean that's being as nitpicky as i could possibly be honestly <laughs> it's not really a knock on the game uh and so i i definitely want to thank the folks over at aeg for sending me point salad it's one that i it's kind of been on my radar i sort of wanted to try it because i thought it would be a good game to play with younger kids i gifted it actually without even playing it i gifted it to my nephews so they've already played it and i haven't even tried it out yet uh, until aeg sent me a copy so thanks so much to aeg uh, if you have any comments or suggestions if you want to answer my question uh, about uh, the number of players that you like to play with when you're playing these kinds of drafting games you can leave those in the comment section below the video or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca brainsongames.ca is the website that's where future episodes will go and the previous ones are up there already brains on games is the twitter handle and the facebook page and the instagram feed so we're all over the place and if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones you can head on over to youtube and click that subscribe button
Thanks for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time.